Okay, Big D. Yep. It's time to get started on building some cabinets. I know you've been waiting for this. Now, as we go through this, and you're going to hear me on every one of these segments, you're going to be going, man, what are we doing? We're we going to end up with a cabinet. Yes, but it's a, it's a certain uh, progress we got to make. We got to sure. proper, and I'll say it a hundred times, we got to properly process the panels. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, peas in there. And you're going to learn a lot as we do this. <laughs> um, we're going to have a lot of uh, standalone videos from this. We'll have a compilation at the end or maybe even in the middle. But you can go back and review these in smaller segments. So, <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do, and this is one of my favorite things because we're going to use one of my favorite accessories. Is now what we gotta what we gotta do first is and I've done we've already done a video on this is how to straight line rip a piece of plywood but I want to get you I want to teach you okay some of the finesse things on using the track saw sounds good okay now first of all you're gonna notice right here Chris can you swing over I'm gonna be using a 36 millimeter hose with this because we're gonna capture the lion's share of the dust you can use a 27 millimeter if you want. But what's really important about this is when you set this up, we're going to put our plug in cord, we'll get it all set up, is making sure it's centrally located. In other words, you do a dry run with the hose and the cord to make sure you can cover the full length and not tug that. <clears throat> when you set up, and I'm going to have you do the rip with this, and we've taught this in a uh, other video we shot uh, a couple weeks ago is getting behind the saw properly right okay and there's a lot of safety things like uh we set the depth earlier on this and making sure come over here so you can see okay. this making sure when you start this you're going to start at full speed yep okay and when you plunge you see how this blade is forward of the board yep okay making sure it's forward of the board and as soon as you can watch See how I have three fingers here in the tote, okay, mm -hmm. with a handle, and my index fingers here, okay? You get behind it like this, okay? Okay. You'll be holding the cord and the hose like this, but you're gonna be pushing it forward like this. That way there, it's in line. You're broad-shouldered like me, and if we ripped like this, we'd be pushing that, and we could cause a bow in this rail. Okay. The other setup I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you. This is the limit stop, and it's for plunge cutting. But I was taught this not, uh, a few years ago. I saw somebody using one of this as a setup block. So what we want to do is we want to capture the blade. So, so go, we'll go ahead, it. set it up like that. You're going to take it like this. That allows you six millimeters of cut. And you're going to bring it all the way down and bring it down here. Okay. Perfect. Okay, and you're just going to bring it back down. Perfect. Okay. That way there, you maximize your dust extraction. Okay. Okay, because your blade is captured. Now, if we went halfway, okay, the blade would be exposed and you wouldn't get the optimum dust extraction. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so are we gonna clamp this today? I would, I would say, yeah. I mean, we have a stop strip on this thing, right? But it's always good to have it clamped down just to keep it from moving, right? Okay, so if this was a piece of hardwood, yeah. Okay, uh, you have undulations in the board. When I straight line hardwood to get a glue line, mm -hmm. <laughs> I always make sure I clamp it. This ply was pretty dead flat, so I'm kind of lazy. I don't clamp it. Hey, mom! <laughs> so let's get set up. I'm gonna have you, we've already knocked out the slot on the rail for you. Make sure we're good there. Double okay. check it. Man, you are a good, you are a, ooh, grasshopper. <laughs> good student, grasshopper. I learned it by watching you. <laughs> Derek, I wanna show you another tip. You gotta okay. go like this with your hand. Man, you got a big paw. <laughs> okay. Uh, see this plug-it cord in here? Yep. You need to put that in and do a full quarter turn. Full quarter turn. So I'm gonna take it in back here. Yep. And we'll make sure we get a big And it's kind of tough turn. to get your hand in there, right? A little bit. Okay, so what I always like to show people is, see these two? This is how you tilt the saw. It gets a little bit easier access, oh, wow. just like okay. that, okay? Always make sure your plug it cord is in a full quarter turn. We'll tighten it back up and bring it to 90. Okay, so gotcha. next thing we're gonna do is you're gonna hook up your dust extraction. And this is the 36, right? 36 millimeters. On the it, ups, it, ups the, it ups the flow, yep, it's on the outside. Okay. Man, he is a quick study. Okay, okay. so you left-handed, right-handed? Right-handed. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you this. I see so many people, look, trying to rip like this and holding this. If you get in the habit of just understanding, I'm gonna let you do this, but look, I always, this is, see this little button here? I push mm -hmm. it up and I cycle it on, I bring it up full speed and then I close. And I've gotten you 
either running the left-handed or right-handed. I'm right-handed too. But if we're running it on the rail, we can rely on the rail to be accurate. It guides it perfect. Because it's a guide rail. It's a guide rail. <laughs> and always lift it up full speed. And by the way, I just want to say, see this right here? That's about the best cut I've ever seen. <laughs> so, so what's next? <laughs> so what's next? <laughs> okay, so we need to get our 300 millimeter widths. We're, gonna, we're building up a cabinet, a wall cabinet, whatever you want to call it. And we need enough plywood for four pieces, a top, a bottom, and two sides. Okay. Okay. And we're going to be ripping them at 300 millimeters. Okay. Okay. Basically 12 inches, roughly. Roughly 12 inches. Okay, so I want you to pick up this board here. Just pick it up just to feel the weight. Okay, so traditionally, we need a reference point because we have just cut this piece perfectly straight line ripped cleaned up the factory edge on it that thing is ready to go so what we would traditionally come on i'll show you what we traditionally do is i would take it over to a table saw like this and this is your reference point uh, okay this is what is known as a fence but think about this big d you're going to be all the way out here eight <laughs> foot away okay with that blade standing up and you have to shuffle the weight of that all the way through okay for a 300 millimeter rip you're going to have to do two of those, and then you're going to have to schlep the whole board up. Now, as good as you get, a saw mechanic or a table saw mechanic knows how to keep it against that fence, because that's what he's referencing. Right. Okay? And if that person does it day in and day out, they get really good at it. But someone like me, I haven't been on a table saw for like 13 years, I wobble on it. So what happens is in the middle of that board, it could be 298 millimeters, it could be 304. Oh jeez. Okay, and then when you get to cross cutting it, which we will with the multifunction table, you get that's where you get your 90s. You never have to get a 90 on this. What we're trying to do is achieve perfect parallel rips. Hopefully you're all following that, okay? We will get our 90s right. with the multifunction table. And I'll show you how to set that up in a few minutes. Okay. But instead of a fence on a table saw, and schlepping all of that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the saw to the wood. Okay. And I want you to think of it like this. This is the table saw fence. See this little point here? This is your reference. Wow. And what's going to happen is the only thing you're going to rely on is you getting behind that saw and ripping it. You're not going to have to lift any weight. Hey! What we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to use these parallel guides. And I'm going to show you how to set those up now. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. When you set these up, you make sure that this is completely open. This here goes on the outside rib. Okay. And you see this T-nut here? It's a cam, an eccentric cam that locks it up from underneath. So what I want you to do is this one is going to go down there. Grab me that one. Because when I set this up, make sure it's completely loose, okay? I'm gonna have you do that one down there okay. in a minute, in a minute, okay? You put that on the outside rib, and you pick this up, and you slide it in there like this. Okay. Okay, so go ahead, take your hand off that. I wanna show the camera this. I lock it underneath here, and that's pulling that T-nut in, okay? And then I lock it on the outside rib. This is why I had you get me this one. The scale goes toward the board. Ah, okay. Because we're going to have to rotate this and flip it around in a few minutes. Okay? So there you go. We're ready to go. Now let's go down here. I'm going to have you do it down there. This goes on the outside. Yeah. Pick that up. Pick that up. Perfect. Now, here's what I want to have you do. This is the first mistake I made with these. I pulled that tight down there so it's against the board. And I pulled this tight. Okay? And I tightened it up. You don't have to. If you look at your reference point, it's extended. Okay, so you have a lot of play. In other words, when we're ripping the 300 millimeter rips and taking them out, mm -hmm. it'll be very difficult. And then we have to move it on to the next one. So what I want you to do is I always pull it tight down there. Okay. And as you pull it, put two fingers in there. Two, okay, got yep. it. Now that's plenty of room. Go ahead and underneath, tighten it up. There we go, okay. Make sure it sits down on the rib. Oh, wow. And make so, sure yeah. it's tight. Okay. Okay. There we go. You set your line up 
Okay, we're gonna set 300 to the middle of that cursor. Okay. So this is an eccentric cam. This T nut here goes just like this, and I'll have you set it up. But do you have your Polini on you? Yep. Okay, give me that thing. Okay, this is what I, I love this because I could take this, and what I do, as you see where it says 300, I extend that line and bring my cursor right in here like this. Okay, good. And that should read exactly 300. It's good to me. It does? Almost. Yes. Grasshopper. <laughs> okay. So I want you to take that and go okay. down and set that one down there. Okay. Looks good Looks to me. Looks good to me. Yes, sir. Here we go. Right cool. on the... Okay. Yep, there you go. Right Let's on there. Tighten that up. I'm going to take a fine... I use 9 millimeter leads. Okay, and watch. When you're measuring... Okay, because you can calibrate these. Anything can be calibrated. But I'm going to make a mark here at 300. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make a mark at 300. I'm just going to bring in here. Okay. Using those feeler gauges? Yep. <laughs> Sometimes the cameraman become grasshopper. <laughs> oh, gosh. I love you guys. <laughs> So right. Oh, oh I, I love you, Chris. Oh, I'm not learning anything about woodworking. It's just you and Big D. He knows more about it than we do. To calibrate the long side of the uh, FS Parallel Guides, I have this set exactly at 300 here, right? See the center of the cursor? And here's my mark I made, and I know that's 300. So when I bring that reference point in here like this, that is cutting to the outside. I want to split the line. This is how it accurate you can get with it. So what I want to do is I want to loosen the cam underneath. I want to loosen this. Okay. And then you see this slotted screw? I'm going to open it up and you have a little bit of play. Watch out D. Okay. I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to bring it back a little. Okay. I'm going to bring my reference point in and I can take my rail and knock it back so that's touching, and see how I can split the line now? Come in here and see this, Chris. Now I'm splitting the line right where I want 300. So I'm going to tighten this knob up. 300 are roughly a foot. Exactly, roughly. But the thing to remember is we could have set this at 301. We could have set it at 302, 298, as long as from end to end. And now. And now, not relying on sending this through a table saw, it's going to be that 300 in the middle as well. Boom. So there you go. One of the things I got to point out is now we're going to be using the track saw right-handed. We're going to be behind it as soon as possible when I say that. Okay. You're going to want to start like this, forward of the cut like I had said. Okay. But what happens is the next thing you know, you're going like this. Yeah. So what I'm going to suggest, as I always have, is start back here. Full oh, okay. speed, don't make sure your blade does not enter this. Full speed like this. And the other thing, as I go with the track saw, my hand is never here on the track. I just put gentle pressure here. Okay. Because I'm always I'm always watching here. Okay? Sure you and sure. as always, I'm always centrally locating my dust extractor. That way there, I'm not dragging it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it has wheels, you don't want to exactly. drag it with me. Right. Sure. That gives you a perfectly parallel uh, rep and making sure that's the hump. Go all the way past it and then bring it up full speed. So yeah. I'm just going to set this here for us. Okay. And if we check this out now, instead of moving that whole piece of plywood, we're just going to move it right here. We're going to take this out. This is exactly 300 millimeters, even in the middle. Well, in here. Can I get Boom. It? Exactly Hold on. Hold 300 on. millimeters. Even Hold on. In, even in the middle. Hold on. Focus. 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 Look at that. Perfectly oh, 300. There it is. Sorry. Hang on. I'll bring <laughs> it in again. And look at that. Perfectly 300, right? Even in the middle, from end to end. We did our first rip. Right. Okay. You're going to be ripping some more uh, and setting it up. One of the things I want to point out. Like I've always pointed out, I've always done this. What if we had to rip about 10 sheets of plywood all at 300 millimeters? Or Whoa. in the midst of it, we had to do some 400 millimeters for kicks, toe kicks, and then some 600 millimeters for bases. You could get turned around on what's what. Sure. Always 
label your boards. Okay. Okay. And don't label them like this. Okay. You can't see that sometimes. Label it. We. Get, you know what? We're gonna sand all that. We're gonna thing. sand it all off, and some of that will disappear. Okay. But always label your boards. Okay. And then this lets us know that this is our clean side. Yeah. And this okay. is a clean side now. Oh, because we just. Oh yeah. Because we're getting the repeatability. You'll get there. Duh. Okay. So let's set up for the next rip. I did the first rip. What are you gonna do now? Hey, you gotta do this. <laughs> so what are you doing? Um, Ex you explain it to me. Okay, just in case you've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I want to support my material, right? So I'll make sure okay. it's... So perfect, you're bringing it toward you. Okay. I would bring it right to the end here like this. Good, that's good. What's right. next? Then I have to make sure that this is making contact. Okay, so ends. do that right now. Go ahead and move it. Perfect. Up and better. Perfect. Okay, uh, what's next? Uh, let me make sure that. Uh, Get your tracks on, uh, on that. We're on auto. Yeah. Okay. Now, you said for this one, I should start okay. here. And I should go flat. Yep, okay. Now, the only thing I want to tell you is now, by the way, perfect. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Always check because you just moved a lot of stuff around. Make sure okay. your point is touching down there. Yep. We're good. We're locked. So let's do it. All right. Let's make a rip. Cool, man. All right. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, start at full speed and lunch. Waiting on it. We've cut our two 300 millimeter pieces. Yep. Okay. Now we have to rip 100 millimeter pieces. It's a variety of reasons. Uh, one, when we do an external toe kick, we're not going to use it for this wall cabinet. Let's okay. say we're doing a base cabinet. Gotcha. Okay. But we're going to rip uh, 100 millimeter <laughs> strips. 100 millimeter strips for uh, our spanners. And gotcha. those are the part or stabilizers that we screw into the wall or screw through into the wall. Okay, so how do we make sure, so we did 300s before and we're going down, way down to 100. How do we adjust Okay, that? so what you're probably asking me is how do we do something narrower than a rail? That's what I'm talking okay. about. Okay, it's these two pieces that I have installed on here. These are called the extensions for the parallel guides. Okay. Okay, there's a, I'm gonna show you how to calibrate them. Okay. Okay, but we'll set them at 100 and we'll make our rips. Easy peasy. Okay. All right, let's get to calibrating. Let's do it. Is I want you to take down here and I want you to see this. Not the edge of the parallel guide, but that line. Okay. I want you to set your cursor to zero because I'm going to show you how to calibrate these. Okay. So they're absolutely perfect. You know what? Good eye, dude. Okay, so. I've seen people try to calibrate these a variety of ways. <laughs> why? It's, why don't you just calibrate it to the saw you're going to be using. And I'm going to take the, the power and the hose off. I'm going to set my depth below 25 millimeter. Okay, I'm going to put it in fast fix. Fast fix it locks the blade down. I'm going to calibrate to that tooth. On so I'm just going to take it like this and I want you to listen. See how it's not touching? Right. It should be touching that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a five millimeter wrench. Okay. And you see these two screws right here? Yep. I'm going to calibrate it just like this. I'm going to open these up. Pretty simple. Just like this. I'm going to bring it. See how there's moving in there? Yep. I'm going to bring it and I'm going to set it right to the tooth. See that? Now I'm going to tighten it up. Tighten it up, and I'm not going to crank it right now because I want you to hear this. See that? Here, yeah. I, what we've done is we've just calibrated the scale. The only time this ever goes out is if you drop your parallel guides or something like that. But I always check for it when I do it. And I just take it, and now I'm going to tighten up the 5 millimeter wrench. Okay. I just have one stored right here, but if you ever lose it, there's that five millimeter wrench hey, hey. right there. I'm going to have you set these at 100, okay. okay, 100 millimeter rips, okay? okay.
stop right there and I'm going to talk for a second. The one thing I always teach people when they're using a track saw is let the machine cut. You're not in a race for anything. And through the course of making the rips with you and using this for the last few weeks, you are really progressing perfectly with this. Okay, getting behind the saw, understanding, hey, it's a left-handed and right-handed saw. Um, making sure like this point is all the way past and then lift it up. Same thing when starting it, you're starting before the cut, you will have perfect rips every time. One of the things I always check is look at that. That's dead on 100. And what do we do? Mark it. You mark it. Okay. There you go. Hey. So big day. Hey. Okay. That is how you calibrate the short end and the long end of the FS Parallel Guides. And that is how you get consistent rips. Okay, so as we end all these segments, be positive, stay sharp.